In lesson 8, we're going to continue learning about formatting our sheets. We'll learn how to change the font, the font size. We'll learn how to resize rows and columns. And we'll learn how to change the foreground and background colors. In the last lesson, we learned how to select a range of cells and make them bold, italics, or underline. In this lesson, we're going to learn some more of the font options. Let's select cells A1 through E1 again and change the font face or the way the font looks. Right up here in the font group, you'll see the font face drop down box. And if you click that box open, you'll see a whole bunch of different types of fonts in here. Everything from Albertus to Algerian, and you can scroll down. Now, the fonts that you have on your system may be slightly different than the fonts that I have on my system. So look down the list and find something that you like. I'll pick Broadway. And as soon as you click on it, you see the change takes effect. In fact, if you look, while I'm scrolling down here, as I hover over the different fonts, you can see in the background a preview of what the sheet will look like if I pick that font. Let's switch to Arial Rounded right here. And there's the new font. If you want to change the size of the text, select the cells again. And right next to the font face is the font size. Drop that box down. And again, you can hover over each number here and see a preview of what it will look like with that particular font size. I'll go with 14 point. And there we go. If you don't see a value that you like, let's say 16 is too small, but 18 is too big, you can type in a number like 17 right up here in the top box. Just back up here and type in 17 and then press enter. And there's 17 point. There are also two little buttons right here, increase font size and decrease font size. And you can click on these to step down or step up in increments to change your font size. Now take a look at something interesting that just happened when I increased my font size. Notice here in cell A1, the value sales rep is still in the cell, and I know that because I can see it in the formula bar. However, in the cell itself, I'm only seeing the word sales. That's because the data that's in that cell is too wide to fit in the column. So in order to fix that, I can either reduce the font size so you can see the whole thing, or I can just make the column wider. To resize a column, take your mouse, and move it right between the column headers A and B. You'll see your mouse pointer changes to a black double pointing arrow with a line in the center of it. Click there and drag to resize that column. Now you can see I've made column A wide enough to display all of the data in cell A1. I can now see the whole label sales rep. You can resize any column that you want. Let's say I want to make column D larger. I'll move my mouse right here, click and drag. And I've just made column D wider. If you want to bring it back, just click and drag back to the left. And there we go. Now here's a neat little trick. If you don't want to have to guess at how wide your column should be, move your mouse right here in that same spot and double click, watch this, click, click. Excel automatically resized that column to fit the data in it. This is handy, for example, if you have a small column, let's say like that, and you just want to be able to double click to widen out that column exactly as wide as it needs to be to fit the data in it. You can do that with any column that you want, column B, C, D, and E. There we go. And I've just automatically resized all of those columns to be as wide as Excel thinks they need to be. You can resize rows almost the same way that you resize columns. Just take your mouse and move in the border between row 1 and 2, for example. Click and drag 
to make the row taller. And I'll just put that back. There we go. You can also double click there to automatically resize the row. Now let's change the background color, the fill color behind the cell. I'm going to select A1 through E1 again. This little paint can right here changes the fill color. Now notice the little color underneath the paint can is yellow. So if I click on the paint can, I get a yellow background. And if you click off of those cells, you can see there's the yellow. But I don't want yellow. I want some different color. So again, let's select those cells. And notice a little teeny tiny down arrow just to the right of the fill color. Drop that down by clicking on it. And here you can see a whole bunch of different colors. Go ahead and pick one that you like. I'll pick a light red. And there it is. And once again, click off of that range of cells to see the color exactly as it's going to appear. Notice the little bar underneath the paint can is now light red. That represents the color that's in the paint can. So if I click somewhere else now, and I just click on the paint can, I get that light red. I'll undo that. If you want a different color, again, select the cells. Open up the paint can. You can pick from theme colors. Remember, themes are packages of colors and fonts that make your spreadsheets look more professional. We'll talk more about themes in a future lesson. There are also standard colors down here, like reds, yellow, greens, blues, and so on. There's no fill, which is the default. And there's also more colors that opens up an even larger palette of colors you can pick from. I'll pick, uh, let's pick with dark purple right here. And there we go. I now have a dark purple background. Now it's kind of hard to read black text on a purple background. So let's change the text color or the foreground color. I'm going to select A1 through E1 again. Now right here is the foreground color or the font color. It works the same way as the paint can. Right now it's red, so that means if I click on that, I'm going to get red text. That's kind of ugly, red on purple. So let's drop this down and pick a different foreground color. We could go with white or a light orange. Let's go with a light blue, right about there. That looks neat. So now I have a real light blue on a purple background. Let's say we want to make our sales rep names a slightly different color. Now I'm not going to pick that same light blue because now I can barely read them. So let's open this up and go with how about, uh, how about a dark blue like that. And this low value right here, Pat only had $12 in sales in January. Pretty bad value, right? Well, I'm going to click on this and change it to red so it highlights it. Maybe even bold it, too. Now Pat's January sales really stand out. So that's how we can change our background color and our foreground color.